this camera? It's not going well. Sorry, buddy. Are we live? Hey guys, welcome. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, on behalf of Chris and Amanda, we thank you for being here. And um, stay tuned. So we're going to get started very shortly. Thank you very much. Well, here we are. Everything that has uh, has tried to make this not a momentous occasion. The whole world went on lockdown, trying to wreck this day. You can tell the value of a person by the strength of their enemies sometimes. Apparently, the bad guys are trying to keep you two away. But not today. Everything's in place. You ready? Are you ready? I will formally ask, who gives this bride to be married to my son? Her mother and I. You may receive your bride. All the way up until mm, two hours ago, things were still changing. The weather changes. The icing melts on a cake. The boutonnieres, some of the flowers fall off. These are good things because um, your Uncle Jeff said, if something doesn't go wrong, I'm going to turn the sprinklers on at 4 o'clock. <laughs> so, so we're good. We're good. We're good. Family and friends Friends who are like family, welcome to the thousands of people watching online. <laughs> As this thing, I used to, I was going to try to call this viral, go, let's go viral, but you don't want viral right now. <laughs> Join us and, uh, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, here we are standing with these two who say that they want to stand together with you. I pray you bless this union in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God created man in his own image. 
And part of that image includes the ability to use free will. Part of that includes the ability to use true love. No other creation can use that. No other creation is aware of true love or that they have free will or that they can use or misuse those things. And so I'll start this ceremony by giving you an admonition to always use those well with one another. You get out of a relationship what you put into it. And I know you've been together for what, almost two years? Is that right? A year and a, yeah? You, know, you knew what you were doing, and here you are. Good. Good. Wait till it's 12 and 20 and 32 and more. You'll get out of it what you put into it. So keep depositing. God looked at man and said, it's not good for man to be alone. Actually, biblical scholars are sure he said, I could do better than this. And so when God created Eve, he took a rib from Adam's side. He didn't take a toe bone to be underneath his foot all the time. Or, or, or a head bone to, to rule over him. Or, or No, I'm telling you what. Or a neck bone, because he's the head and she's the neck that turns the head. There are all kinds of things we say. But the truth is, God took a rib from Adam and formed Eve. You take his breath away. And you can take his breath away if it hurts. He'll hurt when you hurt. But you fill him, you inspire him when things are done well. You fill him with breath. And you're right there under his arm, but next to him. I'd like you to gently put your arm over her shoulder. You can put your arm around his waist and just do that all the time. Because, because the two of you, okay, you can let go. <laughs> the two of you can face things together that one of you might have slipped or both of you separate might have slipped, but together you can make it. God brought a fully formed woman to Adam. So that's why I'm telling you, 50-50 doesn't work, especially in today's world. He brought 100 to Adam. 100 plus 100 equals 100 in God's eyes. You want 50-50, only one of you are allowed to go crazy at a time. <laughs> put 100 into it. Why can't she put the rest? Because you're supposed to put the rest. Put 100 into it. Why can't he? Well, because you're supposed to. You two put 100 and 100 into it, and you watch what God can do. But God saw Adam and Eve together, and he said it's very good, and he blessed that marriage. And we want him to bless this marriage, too. God blesses anything we'll let him touch. So let him touch the marriage. Christopher, your mother and I will always be ready and happy to provide you with whatever counsel you ask. Amanda, your mom and dad will be there to give you advice whenever you ask. But from this day forward, we are your second line not your primary line. The two of you go to God. As of this afternoon, you're at, your warranty expires. You don't get to run back to mom and dad. You don't get to run back to mom and dad. You've got to work this out. We are there for counsel whenever you ask it. But we're not your first line. The two of you got to go to your knees holding hands saying, God, we need your wisdom. And I promise you, the Bible flat out puts in writing, if you lack wisdom, he'll give it to you liberally, abundantly. Your duty as a Christian couple is to go to God and ask him for his counsel and his advice, and he will help you create a new road with his spirit. From day one, May 31, 2020, this is your wedding day. When we got together, we talked about possibly having two anniversaries when we couldn't get the license marriage belongs to the church but you have one wedding day that's today may 31st 2020 that's your starting line i believe god is looking down on us and saying it is very good that also means the enemy hates this but we're one can stand up to a thousand, two can stand up to ten thousand. You have exponential strength together. That's why he fights against it. He'll do anything to drive a wedge between the two of you. He will try to use me to drive a wedge. He will try to use your mother and your mother and your father and your sisters 
He'll do anything he can possibly do to try to drive a wedge between this because he hates healthy marriage. You can outlast him. You can outdo him. You have greater authority. He's a really good talker, and he roars from time to time. But the devil has no teeth left, and he can barely stand up because he's been defeated. Every time you guys look and see, oh, there's a wedge. We're arguing about something stupid again. You realize, oh, the stupid enemy is trying to drive us away again because he hates what we got going. So if there are any persons here today that have ought to say against this wedding, we are really not interested. <laughs> Christopher. Alyssa found her husband, Andrew, online <laughs> where did you first see this woman online what is it with you kids he he saw your picture and he was so interested he says oh i gotta meet her <laughs> this is a true story and so the village of their friend circle put together this this thing and uh and i think it was at macy's house right um okay <laughs> So Christopher came to Amanda and tried talking her up, and he made just barely enough impression where, where she was impressed enough or maybe she felt sorry for him enough, I don't know. But it was enough to make her want to at least go out with you. So congratulations, your plan worked. And uh, they went on a double date to Little Italy. They had lunch, they walked around, they had a nice enough time. But they didn't do much for the next few weeks. Why didn't you call her? Say, let's do something now. We'll never know, but your plan worked. <laughs> We're here today. So sometime between New Year's and Christmas, 2018-2019, uh, she asked him, what are you doing for New Year's Eve? And he didn't have any plans. I don't know. Yeah, that's when he called, because we had that big thing going. And he said, I just can't come. I can't explain it right now. <laughs> and he went to a party with you. And there, <laughs> he said, Midnight's coming. I don't want you to feel any pressure like we have to kiss. And she says, oh, there's no pressure. I wasn't going to kiss you at midnight. <laughs> a week later, they had a real date. They went to Scripps Aquarium. They went to Little Italy again. They went to Seaport Village. They lost the car. They were walking around so much. Christopher was so smitten that he lost my 35-millimeter camera. I just wanted that somewhere in posterity. So, <laughs> Okay. I'm like, and he called to apologize, and they went back, and, and I said, this girl must be special. He says, oh, Dad, she is. I'm like, how many dates? He says, well, this is our real first real one. <laughs> you had him. Huh? You had this poor guy. <laughs> After their first date, he asked, um, well, uh, you want to be boyfriend, girlfriend? She says, no, it's got to be at least three dates minimum. <laughs> <laughs> so on that third date, he was taking too long, <laughs> and waiting for dinner and so they went to they went to a creepy cemetery yeah. <laughs> it was a pretty cemetery sorry <laughs> a cemetery and she asked him well are we going to make this official or what and he says i was going to ask she's like yeah we're taking too long <laughs> so they've been official ever since in any relationship perspective of fact and truth can get mistaken i asked christopher and amanda who said i love you first mm -hmm. And Christopher said, well, she said it. And she says, no, you said it. He says, no, you said, I love you. And she says, no, I, you said, I love you. And I said, I love you right away. And he said, no, I was saying, I love you to meet my parents sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> we may never know. <laughs> and we can still find the epic photographs of the, of the romantic proposal online, you guys. Come on. Um, talk about setting the bar. May I encourage you to find creative ways to be romantic like that the rest of your lives? Pastor Sean, who, uh, who did the premarital counseling, um, of course, with all of this stay-at-home orders and stuff, had to do a lot of the counseling on, on video conferencing. And he said sometimes when they got to the tough parts, Christopher's video would go out <laughs> or, or Amanda's video would stop. And he, but, but they made it through to the end, so that's okay. Enough roasting these two. Amanda, I will tell you something that I've discovered about you over the last year and a half or so. You're a true artist. And that means you feel things more deeply than most people. You feel the affection and interest, creativity and participation in life. 
but you also feel that absence more effectively too. And that can bring you down because you are an artist. The B is right next to my head. I've known some artists, and I've known some artists that were just like flower petals. But you're made of sturdy stuff. I'm very proud of you. Your parents are very proud of you. But you're made of sturdy stuff. You don't wilt every time you don't get your way. And you watch and see more than most people do. You actually look and watch better than most people. I knew another woman named Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was like that. She watched. She kept things in her heart. She saw things. People would talk about it. People would say, oh, that's wonderful. She would hold things in her heart and just kind of just kind of say, you know, there's something to that. That's like you. And she was, a, she was strong in her faith. She just trusted God. Okay, God, whatever you want to do. How do you want to do it? I encourage you to be like that. Be like that. Christopher, God put those things in her for you. What a package deal. What a, what a package deal. There's no way you could have known all that was inside of her when you first got together. But here you are. You opened the box and you found that there was more inside than, than could ever fit there. I bless the Lord for his loving kindness and favor of bringing her into your life. A father always wants his children to find someone worthy. I believe you have. It's the highest compliment I can pay you. Christopher, you're, you're a poet. You are, not because you rhyme words well, but you're, you're, you're a romantic in life. You show love in more ways and and more often than most people, which means that sometimes they don't show it back as much as you do in life. But you never run out. Isn't that funny? As you keep putting out, God keeps refilling you somehow. Do that. Do that. You also have a sense of justice that, that brings tears to mind. You have a sense of justice. You know when somebody's doing right and when somebody's doing wrong. You try to muscle through, but it still gets you. Never stop feeling that. It's okay to sense something is wrong and you want to make it right. Okay, that's part of who you are. It's part of who she fell in love with. You're also disciplined. I suppose your, your athletic training helped some of that. But I believe that just added to a spiritual gift that God gave inside of you to have some type of discipline. You will finish something if it burns. You still finish. I knew a man who was kind of like that. I read about him. His name's Peter. He would just jump out there and do what he thought was right, even when it was wrong sometimes. But when it came time, he spoke to thousands of people and was not timid about saying, this is right, and what's been going on is wrong. Let's do right. And God put all that inside of him. There's no way you could have known before you came to this day that all of that was inside of him but God gave you a package deal you open the box and there's no way all that could fit <clears throat> and your parents love you and there's no way any man in the world could ever be the right perfect guy that deserves you <laughs> and they're giving you to him that's got to be the highest compliment they can pay you as we join these two in the bonds of holy matrimony, these two enter a covenant that's under attack today more than ever before. Those who are here, family, friends, loved ones, those, those that are watching online, if you're watching this after the fact and it's a recording, hey, it's May 31st, they're getting married. Amanda's circle, those who are part of Christopher's circle, I charge you today, will you promise to encourage and support these two in marriage and in times of trouble? Will you commit to point them back to each other and together back to God in every situation? Everyone attending, listening, and watching this ceremony, will you give them your most solemn promise never to allow or be part of anything that would tear these two apart? If so, promise, saying, we will. Christopher and Amanda, from this day forward, 
you may not give up easily but press through when you're mad you don't get to go home to your separate homes when something didn't go right you go home together and you fix it press through because there's a peace found on the other side of adversity some people never discover if this is your promise to one another say it is then with the blessing of the Lord and the commitment of your friends and family and with your commitment let's celebrate this new pledge of allegiance the Bible says a woman must submit to her husband and then it says a husband better give her somebody worth submitting to you're side by side it commands husbands to love and honor and favor and be faithful to their wife and it same passage says wives do the same thing with your husbands so Amanda will you commit to love and honor Christopher for the rest of your lives and will you value and cherish him and be a help me to him on the lookout for dangers that he might miss and will you promise to grow in your faith together and live your life together in Christ growing along with Christopher in the truth and strength of the Lord Jesus Christ if so answer I will Christopher Will you commit to love and honor Amanda for the rest of your lives? Will you value and cherish her, protect her from harm? And will you follow God's command to love her as Christ loves the church? And will you grow in your faith and be the spiritual head of the household, growing with Amanda in the truth and strength of the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will. Christopher, as her covering and life partner, it's your responsibility to pray with Amanda for yourself and for her. Are you willing to do that? Are you prepared to begin, begin that today? Say, I will. Amanda, as his helpmeet and life partner, it's your responsibility to pray with Christopher and for yourself and for him. Are you willing to do that? And are you prepared to begin that today? Say, I will. Why don't you face each other? Hold both hands. And now the two of you. You look at me. You look at her a lot. Look at me now. Do you two promise to keep those vows and spend the rest of your life being the faithful, godly husband and wife and live with one another with love and tenderness and forsake all others and only be faithful to one another? If so, say, I do. Have you the wings? I have the wings. <laughs> Hold out your hands, bud. There's one. Hold out your other hand. There's that. Why don't you give me his? He's got a big old. <laughs> he's got a big old ring. Christopher, why don't you place this on her left hand and repeat after me. I, Christopher, take you, Amanda, to be my wife, to have and to hold in sickness and in health, through thick and thin. I promise to love you for the rest of our lives. I will continue to grow in faith with you as we grow closer to Christ together. I love you. We're now one family. <laughs> Do you need to lick her finger? No. It's all good. You got it. <laughs> we're, we're now one family. <laughs> Till death do us part. Here, why don't you take his ring and place it on his head. Oh, wait. His, his finger. Are you ready? Yeah. Look at your groom and say, I, Amanda, take you, Christopher. To be my husband, to have and to hold, in sickness and in health, through thick and thin, I promise to love you for the rest of our lives. I'll continue to grow in faith with you as we grow closer to Christ together. Look at him. <laughs> Tell him I love you. We're now one family. Till death do us part. Turn, turn to me. 
by the authority of 1 Corinthians 5 and John 20, 23. I stand as a minister of reconciliation of Christ. I stand with the word of reconciliation of Christ. I stand as an ambassador of Christ. And both of you have given me your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And by that confession, by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by your faith, your sins are remitted. Anything that has happened before today, you stand forgiven before God. Do you hear me? May 31st, about 5 o'clock or so, God can look down from heaven and say, they are righteous before me. They, they can come to me for anything. They're my children. Everything in the past is washed away. Nothing previously stands as your fault. God says you're justified. And now you have a responsibility for the rest of your lives. Hey, you know what? God saved us. Let's live for him. By the oaths that you've made before God and these witnesses and by giving and receiving of rings, by the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> what God has joined together, let no one put us under. You want to kiss her? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> now, the bride and groom wish to take Holy Communion as their first act together as a married couple. So I'm going to serve them communion over here to the, to the side. And um, then I'm going to call up the parents, and we're going to pray with them. And so everybody hold your positions, if you would, and, uh, and, and just wait, because we're going to have communion and start this marriage off on, on, on the right trajectory, okay? So hold tight. Here we are.
Everything's in place. <laughs> Everything's been done that can be done to set you on the right trajectory. It's up to you to hit the gas, go forward. I have the privilege of closing in prayer. And I'm prayer, prayer blessing on you. And then we'll, uh, we'll break to our next things we're going to be doing. So receive this blessing. Father in heaven, I pray over these two right now. I pray a prayer of blessing, God. You ordained so many things before you ever lit the sun. God, you were knitting them in their mother's wombs and had a plan for them already. And now today, as we take another step forward, I pray as they, as they look to you, Lord, and as they keep your word first in their lives, they'll cause their own way to prosper but that you would bless them going in. You would bless them coming out. You would bless them when they're in the country, in the fields. Well, you would bless them at their jobs. Lord, you'd bless them when they're talking to people. You'd bless them in the city. You'd bless them when things look scary and everybody else is wondering why in the world are they here, but they would take care of business, that they would glow in the dark, Lord, that they would be a light in a dark world and they would water places that are drier and empty. I pray for fruitfulness, Lord, and when they choose to grow a family, Lord, that their family would grow. You would bless them at the right time in the right way, Lord, and that they would be confident that your hand of blessing is upon them every step. I proclaim the name of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus over their household. Peace in the name of the Lord. And in the name of Father and Son and Holy Spirit, I bless the two of you. Amen. Amen. Y'all are married. Y'all are married. Turn around. Can I introduce you, please, to Christopher and Amanda Moore? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and staying tuned with uh, Chris and Amanda's wedding. Now Chris and Amanda Moore. We are so excited for them and we wish them the best. Thank you guys so much for being a part of their special day and we wish you guys the best. Have a great evening. Thanks.